Hi everybody, uh, Keith here, Mark's behind the camera, and today uh, we're going to do another quickie lesson, how to paint rocks. Uh, I've noticed on many occasions that people have a little bit of trouble with them for some reason. I think I have a couple answers for you that'll kind of make your paintings a little more creative, I think. Um, I think. We'll find out. Anyway. Uh, and who if doesn't you... want to know how to paint rocks? Well, my... <laughs> I was just thinking of my... Uh... There's a class, uh, you know, little girls with the, they paint the little uh, stone. Never mind. Okay. Um, I remember when I told my brother I was going to paint turtles, and uh, he started laughing with that one, too. So. They already have painted turtles. Well, yeah. But <laughs> that's back in the day. Anyway, um, today I actually drew the picture dark enough that you'll be able to see it, I hope. Um this has been a you know a little bit of a problem we have but since these are just uh, kind of examples I felt it might be a little easier on you if I actually did it uh, hard enough for you to see it I also put a little Sun right there in the corner that's going to be our um, that's gonna be our little light source so I'm gonna have the light coming basically from left to right um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started one of the things you want to do is uh, when you draw up your rocks, see if you can get a little facets into them. A little bit of, they don't, you know, most rocks are not super smooth river rocks, okay? That, and that's another whole story. Uh, you know, I think it's a good thing to try to, little rougher rocks, little rougher edges. They don't have to be real, real, um, you know, broken or harsh. But it's kind of nice that they're not just this nice, smooth, round stone. Try to get a little texture in it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to do this big one up here. I'm going to wet the paper. Basically, I'm going to do them one at a time. So I kind of wet the paper. I'm going to do kind of a bluish rock, I think. So I'm going to pull up some ultramarine. Ooh, a little strong on the uh, uh, indigo. I also have a ultramarine violet, so I'm going to add a little of that. And then just to kind of knock it down a little bit, I'm going to add a little bit of this uh, Quinn, Quinn Brown, um, burnt sienna rather, uh, which I hit it pretty hard. So we're going to go back. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to kind of get some color in first. And as you can see, because the paper has been moistened, the you can see how it moves very nicely. So as I come around this edge, I want it to be a little bit lighter on this side where the light is coming towards it. Um, wow. Now the idea is once again to work from light to dark. I'm going to start getting a little more value on this side of the rock. But at a certain point, I'm going to have to stop and let it kind of dry up. So while that one's drying, I pick a rock that's just a little farther away. And we'll do another one. So again, oops. I forgot. I'm going to wet it. Yay. Oh, we looks a dry rock. Exactly. All right. They flow better. All right. Paint flows a little better with it. So, anyway, here we go. Oh, 
Got a lot of water in this tray. I'm going to pull some out just because that is just a, a mite too moist in there. So, all right. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to vary up the color a little bit. A nice bit of violet. Again, some of this Quinn Brown. I'm going to add a little bit more of this uh, ultramarine violet, which I kind of like too. All right. So again, <laughs> I'm going to try to find a rock unadjacent, not adjacent to another one. So, that's just so the colors don't bleed into each other? Exactly. Which can look cool, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm just... But for this example... Now... In case you didn't notice on that one, I didn't wet it first. <gasps> I know. It's a rock. For God's sake. No, anyway. So... But sometimes by not wetting it, you get a better texture. Just kind of get it on there. As you can see, I'm light, dark. And then we're going to start putting facets into these things as I, as I move along. Well, all right. So, another color we might try is sepia. It's my favorite poopy brown. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat a little bit. I've got this tiny line of white so it, so that I don't touch the other rock. Then I'll just kind of fill it in later. Keith, you're a genius. Oh, All right. And, you know, there are such things as uh, pretty rocks, too. Um, <laughs> like granites, pinks, nice pink granites and stuff. You're going to show a sample how to do that? No, hell no. no. Why did you bring it up? Just to let people know that, you know, your rocks don't all have to look like <sighs> grim, dark, foreboding. And again, just getting a little more color to one side than the other. A little lighter on one side, a little darker on the other. All right. I could try, I could make one pretty rock, maybe. If you insist. I do. Fine. We'll do some kind of maybe some kind of pinky granite. I'm using uh, what is that? It's like I've never seen it before. Uh, I'm using um, Naples yellow and a little bit of crimson to get kind of a pinkish cast. Now when you do use um, the uh, Naples yellow it does have white in it so 
the color can be opaque but I think if you get enough water on it you can thin it down and pink it up lighten it up a little bit all right Okay, Mr. Mark. Yes, sir. What is our time? About 10 minutes, 11 minutes. Okay, so I lied. How about? How quickly I will be able to just whip these out. Yeah. But I am trying. I don't know, gray and pink rocks. That, it's not bad. Yeah. I think we'll go with it. Again. You can wet them. But again, they are rocks. If you can get it done, if you can get a coat on them quick enough, you don't necessarily have to wet it. we got I'm trying a little green in to uh, eh, just kind of grade it out to a brown again so that didn't turn out all that pretty but it's different slightly different So slightly lighter on one side than the other. So are these rocks by a river? Are they in a field? They float yep. In space? These are um, these are in a white void. Um, I guess it just depends where you're. I've done so many different kinds over time. Um, Texas, they're by rivers. I loved. Uh, around Austin um, just incredible scenery hill country uh, beautiful rivers that you can walk for miles with cypress trees and beautiful beautiful rocks uh, a lot of pink granite there um, in that area uh, in Hawaii when I lived there it was all black I was on the big island it was all very fairly fresh lava, you know, uh, geo, geo what? Geo something. Thermal? No. Geographic? Yeah, national. <laughs> um, Geometric? Nope, time-wise. Anyway, can't think of the word. There's no time for thinking. Um, but time-wise, it's fairly fresh lava. And black and shiny so you would have on that stuff oftentimes it would be uh, there'd be a lot of white in your image because of the reflection of the light off of a fairly shiny surface Michigan uh, it's a sure bet that you can uh, probably find some nice stuff near the uh, shorelines I remember a lot of rocks on uh, Lake Huron uh, not so much on uh, Michigan but 
maybe superior okay anyway so I've kind of got their colors laid in um, I'm gonna have to stop for a minute so um, Mark can I stop for a minute sure we can take a quick break they'll never even notice yeah exactly it'll be quicker than you think and just like that we're back I um, took the liberty of uh, allowing this to dry erasing the little Sun in the corner that was just annoying me and we're ready to get back to uh, finishing up these rocks real quickly I do want to point something out to you if you look at my rocks every one of these you'll notice that the bottoms there really isn't a flat one in the bunch um, you want to get a little bit of a, a the curvature of the uh, rock itself um, on the surface uh, a lot of times people have very flat uh, bottoms on them uh, that either shows like they're it doesn't matter it, it, it makes it look like a little kids drawing where you're drawing right on the uh, horizon line that doesn't exist so what you want to do put a little curvature at the bottom of your rocks and uh, and throw a horizon line in that can be uh, possibly up here but the idea is that these are not sitting directly on the horizon line the only way that would be possible is if uh, you were an ant and you were or you're laying with your face right on the ground anyway just a little hint all right little uh, little drawing hint all right so I'm gonna start uh, texturing these uh, not texturing uh, rather uh, shading these uh, rocks up now uh, all right here we go so I'm gonna start with a big guy back here so it isn't just uh, like shadow it's also what I want to do is kind of give these rocks some facets so that they don't look like they're just big smooth objects and facets kind of make them slightly more interesting it actually makes them a lot more interesting so you want to kind of look at it and kind of make decisions how you want to how you want to facet your rocks is he saying facet what would i fasten them to yeah exactly so as you can see I've started kind of just gently giving some shadow to some of these perhaps uh, a facet or two that is not directly in the light like this little bugger right here and as you can see it creates a, a little more interesting a little more interesting rock if you have just a little bit of texture and facets to them not just texture okay all right so I'm gonna go this low guy here So I'm kind of roughly, if you saw that, I kind of, using the side of the brush, kind of dragged my brush a little bit. 
And anywhere it's wet, I'm now adding this brown just to kind of give it a little bit of a little bit of a texture to it so it isn't all just a smooth flat looking thing. I like to use violets to help create shadows. Yay. What, are you sleeping over there? I was just enthralled by your calming <laughs> voice. Your boring, your boring voice. Thank you. I feel better now. I said I was being soothed. <laughs> All right. Can you come back about 11 o'clock when I need to go to bed? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm going to try to pick up the pace here. Scream a lot more as I'm... I like rocks. Yeah. I like rocks. My rocks are... My rocks are rocky. They have texture and love. Okay, we haven't been painting that long. All right. Ah, uh, yellow and blue make green. The dulcet tones. All right. Okay, good. Well, I can amuse myself for hours. Somebody better be able to. Yeah. Okay, so. Red, little blue, and again, I'm going to. So you see the little bits of texture and stuff that are in there. If I see something I like, I, I try to leave it alone and just try to enhance, enhance the shadowing a little bit, enhance the. Um, some of the facets to make it feel like it isn't quite as smooth a rock as that first coat. And Just a little, real dark, dark. Just a... Sorry. Swinging that around so quickly. So this has dried up a little bit, and I can see that I could... Just get a little more value in there. So these little browner rocks are mostly um, using the violets, the burnt sienna, the quin, quin sienna, a little bit of indigo. Huh. 
And the thing is, what's going to happen is you're going to paint and you're going to let it dry. And then you're going to look at it again and go, do I need more value? Do I need more color? What can I do to make this, you know, slightly more interesting? Add a background. You know what? You're just, you ask for something quick and... I don't get it anyway. <laughs> Okay, fine. What is the five minute lesson? No, not five. I didn't. I, I I meant fifty minute lesson. By the time you're done, you'll you'll chop it down into something. I'll be ashamed of. Where's my head? I'll just recommend everybody if they want to watch it in a normal speed to set their. <laughs> YouTube slower. I'll be playing it back at 400 speed. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it back to the 1960s. All right. See, I leave little bits of light here. I will actually go back in now. Drop a little water. I did this with the... Branch lesson I did earlier this week. No, just kidding. Crap, now i got to put them in a certain order? <laughs> yes. It may not or may or may not have been released already. Yeah. Anyway. And it may or may not have been more or less than a week. It's only for a week, so have no fear. Depends on how fast Keith edits it. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. Got him. Yeah. I don't. But I don't get paid for those. Ex paid in love. Exactly. All right, so again, you can see if I don't like what I'm seeing, or if I don't think I've got enough value, you just go back in, add a little more. I'm doing it kind of dry brush just to see how I kind of lightly drag it across the paper and get a little bit of texture there. And I'm just going to... Kind of soften it up a little. Yeah. Anyway, I could do this all day. Please don't. All right, fine. But I won't. Mark has a budget. He has to put all this film, pay for all this film. Wait a minute. Digital storage isn't free. <laughs> All right. So when you do kind of put rocks together too, you kind of want to make sure they're kind of shadowing each other also. So that looks pretty good. And the other thing I'm doing right now, as you can see, is I got a nice little dark chunk in there. I'm going to do it over here now, too. You need value. You need the very light to the very dark to make it halfway interesting. Um, if not, you'll just get a very kind of bland pile of rocks. So, like I said, I think it's important... See these little corners, these little triangular little areas where rocks meet each other? That's a great place to throw a nice little dark spot when you can. Because that just gives them good separation. And gives you a nice little area to uh, shadow, basically, to get a little more of that feeling of uh, facets on a rock. All right. A little more depth to your image. All right. And I tell you what, it's going to take you a couple tries 
But once you get the hang of this, you'll be able to paint every lighthouse across America that's sitting on a big rock. All right. Promise? Yeah, I swear. This is one of those uh, lessons uh, when I teach my classes that uh, they seem to appreciate. So it looks easy. It's a little trickier than you think. But like I said, once you have it, you'll be able to just kick out stuff all the time. Like I said, rocks are, don't have to be boring. Did I say that? I don't remember. We could go back in the video. I just realized Mark left 20 minutes ago. I'd say goodbye if I left. <laughs> I've had enough. Maybe. I'm tired. All right. All right, monsieur, I do believe I am nearing the end of this adventure. I know, if it was an adventure, there'd be blood and pirates. I do believe one day we will teach a class on paint like a paint like a pirate day. That's got to be interesting. Sounds like a plan. I get to talk like a pirate too, right? Yeah. Where's your uh... bandana? Bandana. Been saving it. <sighs> Is that a hot day? Hi, <laughs> with a fine wench. All right, so I could play with this forever. I won't, though. Pretty sure Mark would have something to say. So, Mark, do you have something to say? Uh, good job, Keith. Aww. Another positive reinforcement. Aw, thank you. I guess if you'd like, I could tell everybody to go to rkmcguire.com, check out the prints you have, and uh, check Please. out other videos, subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it, go to Students of RK McGuire, uh Facebook group, share your work, uh, look at other stuff that people are doing, and yeah. on yeah. the website as well, we have material lists now, not in the description of the video, links to the website in the description. But if you want to see the material list for what Keith's using the paper, the paint, the brushes, that's all on rkmcguire.com. Your go-to source for everything Keith's kind of doing. And <laughs> other places, too, maybe. Wait, what? Huh? I don't know. Where am I going next? <laughs> oh, no. Goodbye. Yeah. Anyway, thank you very much, everyone. Um, um, probably going to do one more in this series uh we're still trying to figure out how to name it so uh until next time take care uh thank you very much bye <laughs>